Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am wearing quite clearly this mask, which, by the way, I will take off for uh, the purpose of better understanding. I want to testify here about what people who work in the hospital experience in uh, Bone in Burgundy and in the world, a system, you know, a crisis of the health systems that we have not experienced for quite some time. Well, yes, uh, hospital carers are like those who uh, carry out performances in public, except that we haven't had enough time to have stage fright in 2020. And after that, we went up fighting with the adrenaline in blood because there was action and because we really can give of ourselves. And as with any event, event this part where it's tough, where you get a bit depressed and you get back in the daily routine, you have questions about the meaning of our lives and the limits of giving yourself this is what are experiencing the health systems, and this is why it's so hard to manage to find again the level of human resources that we all really need. Look, despite of this, we need to reassure, since we were able to adapt for the past two and a half years, and we'll continue to do so. We will continue to do that because we need more out of patient facilities, we need to facilitate the return to access to health care, we need to break down barriers. And for the professionals, better harmonize professional life and personal lives, which is not the only challenge for those who work in hospitals, but of our economic world. We are lucky at the OSPC Ville de Bonne is that we have specific means, thanks to the buyers who will be later on here, to in for our equipment and our buildings. For example, we'll have in our future hospital whose works will be starting in one year's time, a percentage of one bed rooms, but also family rooms in maternity uh, above national averages. And look, we wanted also to have spe specific themes in our actions in this health uh, category. It will be about hospitality in 2023. Well, it's quite natural, isn't it? We'll be reconsidering completely how we welcome people on the phone, physically, people, because access to health starts right there. And then we are redoing completely the organization of our health pathways to make them easier more lisible, readable. It's so tough, believe me. And finally, our emergency ward will be making a makeover with projects starting as of for, uh, January for three months and we'll have taken all the lessons from the health crisis. And lastly, you have some brochure with you to go to the end of hospitality. We are taking care of uh, the welcome in our vineyards, but the Hotel Dieu as well behind me. For the first time, we have a cultural program because the Bone uh, Town, and hopefully, I'm sure that Mr. Mayor is encouraging strongly. It's not July, November, and uh, it's all year that you can have exciting stays in our uh, town. Our slightest duty is to propose activities, program visits, specialized that you'll be able to read in the brochure that was given to you throughout the year. Let's also work on the environment. I don't know if they completed their COP, I forgot the name, uh, what is it, which number is it, 27, 28, at any rate, we have started uh, to bear our responsibility. The bioconversion has started five years ago and officially since the past two years, and you know that for many reasons, but as a director of the hospital, it is important because we owe it to respect those who work in the vineyards, those who live around our plots and those who consume our wines. <laughs> Lastly, children. Well, children, kids, yesterday, well, not yesterday, this morning very early, I was thinking again about a great poem of Victor Hugo when the child appears, the circle of family applauds with a uh, big cries and read the whole uh, poem and really this list part, which is so beautiful. Uh, Lord, protect me. Protect those that I love, brothers, friends, parents, and my enemies even in their triumphant evil. Never seen, Lord, 
Uh, the summer without uh, uh, birds, without bees, flowers, and the house without children. Uh, Lastly, thank you for your attending here. Thank you for your attachment to our beautiful institution, which each day has proven a uh, uh, profound engagement for the economic touristic of our territory. Thank you very much again. I am to announce the next uh, item on the agenda. Mrs. Ginou, now the managing director, will be uh, taking the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Poem. Hello, everyone. I am Marine Ginou, managing director of Sotheby's France. I'm very pleased to be here today uh, in Bonn for a new edition of the wine sale of the Hospice de Bonne, the 162nd in 2021. Sotheby's had the honor of orchestrating for the first time next to the Hospice, the sale, and therefore for the past uh, year and something, we started preparing this earlier. Uh, for more than one year, we are partnering with the Hospice. We are fully aware of the significance of all our actions in favor of the oldest and the most famous uh, wine, uh, auction sale. We are proud to be with the Hospice for this, for all the reasons that Mr. Boer has just outlined for us. I will not mention Victor Hugo, but I think this uh, poem is perfect to uh, start and kick off out there. And this adventure, this common human adventure, started in the spring of 2021. It was paced by events in over 15 uh, towns and cities in the world in the context you will remember that was quite complex in terms of the COVID disease. So we completed this first chapter last year at the same time under the HAL with great success, a total record of 12 million six for 362 uh, lots so far less than this year, as you know. And at the time, uh, the average price was about 35,000 euro per piece. and. 800,000 years for the president piece. And this first common sale with the old piece came along for us with the launch of our wine department in continental Europe with France as a base. And with this new development of the wine business for Sotheby's, we uh, in Bonn, Bonn was on the core centers for our operations. We are organizing many things from the territory and demand for wine burgundies keeps increasing a trend that was born out last year. For Sotheby's, the amount of our wine sales and spirits reached last year a total record of $132 million and the wine burgundy represent 46% of it. So Sotheby's wines has experienced in 2021 a very fruitful year. We had organized 53 sales around the globe. For the 162nd edition of the charity sale, our preparation program was also very intense, or even more so because we were able again uh, to travel a bit more. And before the sale, our team, uh, our wine team, with Team Rishi Ameles Atawi, who are in the room here, well, they met uh, customers with about 20 tastings around the globe for each time during these events meet and involve collectors and give them the opportunity to discover both the history of the institution, its uniqueness, and also the excellence of the wines of this institution. And I think I have to speak louder or maybe sing because there's a lot of uh, the context noise. And now the quality was highlighted about the wines produced by Ludivine Niveau and her teams and about the great 2022 uh, vintage. For the sale, we're continuing also to innovate through tools that are made available for us, especially our digital tools to reach an international audience, which is more and more numerous, but also locally. So the sale experience is ever increasingly pleasant with some uh, experiences like the huge screen behind us. Look, I don't know if you can hear me with that background noise. I have a beautiful sound the surrounding me and hope I'll try to pace the end of my uh, statements by especially turning it over to Lydie Vincrivo, who is a manager of the Hospice de Bonne. I think before that, I'll turn it over to the representative of the Visio du Monde and Princess Marco representatives. Good luck to listen to hear what they are going to say with the background noise. Hopefully, it will be quiet in a while. Thank you very much for attending.
Obviously, uh, I have a Brazilian uh, spouse, she's at home. It's a batucada, you know, the kind of dancing they have in the Brazilian streets. Mrs. Camille Romain de Beaupont, who is the CEO of the Vision du Monde. I will not try to uh, do some steps of dancing, but let's build up on Mr. Poe what you said about the indirect consequences of the COVID pandemic, which seems quite far. Well, that pandemic totally reshuffled the cards for the most vulnerable uh, children and people and uh, uh, lockups constantly, uh, children not going to school, all the economic deregulation and rest has led many, many thousands of people into poverty. Well, we had a positive trend with lots of hopes in the fight against extreme poverty. Again, this is rising. And who are the people the most hardly hit? Well, the children, the most vulnerable, those who have disabilities. So those children for which the Vision du Monde organization, which is part of an international organization, is fighting around the globe to allow each child, each little girl and boy, regardless where they are born, to live well in their lives. And this entails what? Very concretely, very simply, eat uh, enough each year to grow well, uh, buy potable uh, uh, drinkable water, go to school and choose what they want to do later on. So Vision du Monde is putting in place very concrete projects which are for the long term. Mr. Mayor, as you know, it takes time to bring about changes. So we are part in two projects, part of 15 years in the areas that are stable enough to do so by involving the families. We don't do it for them, but with them, we are here to support and give families the keys to raise their children under the best possible conditions. So this is the first part of our work. And we also help the most vulnerable children. We mean that, you know, when you look at uh, chaotic news in our world, the wars, the uh, uh, displacements also endanger the lives of their children in Ukraine and Afghanistan, for example, but also today in uh, part of Africa. All these crises also will uh, uh, put in danger children. So Vision du Monde also steps in in Venezuela, for example, Colombia with uh, Caminantes families in, Afga in Afghanistan, in Ukraine, in Moldavia, where I was several months ago, to allow, protect these children and allow them to live fully their lives. So for those sales to the Vision du Monde has presented, and we're very happy, by the way, about this, to imagine that this project can be supported to help particularly the girls in Kenya, in Africa, we don't talk a lot about them, well, there are uh, people, some uh, areas where there are many poor. When you have marriages of children, very young uh, girls who are 10 or 13 years old who get married by force. Look, I'll skip all the details that you can imagine when you're married so young and when you're pregnant at the age of 14. It's a vicious poverty circle which is triggered there. And this marriage practice is associated with another practice. I'm looking for the word. I have no adjective for it. Yeah, barbarian. It's a barbarian where the uh, the, on the they really maimed uh, their uh, genitals with with consequences on their future life of women and also psychological trauma. So Vision du Monde will put a long-term project. It's called Kenya Big Dream. Hopefully this afternoon that dream will become reality for the Kenya children to allow to stop this practice of early marriages. It's a method that we already put in place elsewhere and it's working. So today, let me end with this uh, note you know, about hope. This is our message. Yes, there are many things that are awful in the world, very negative, but we know also that by being all of us together, both the donors, but in the field also, we can bring about changes. Yes, it's possible. Step by step, there's always hope. That's the message we want to deliver today. So hopefully this afternoon, our hopes will be again fulfilled, even more supported with the generosity of the vice of this beautiful Burgundy wine. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Atab. Uh, for the organization Princess Marco, the charity organization. Hello, everyone. Let me build up on what Camille has just said from Bison du Monde this year. It's a cause for childhood that was selected, and this is why we are both of us here representing uh, childhood. 
We have a bit the same tagline, the same commitment and engagement. We keep saying, without you, nothing is possible. Together, everything is possible. And this is where we join up because of uh, childhood, obviously, uh, hurts, involves everybody. We know that in France, 2,500 children uh, suffer from cancer every day. That's about one a child out of 444, 20% of them will never heal. Thank you, Mar uh, and we, Margot, are part of the... Cécile Margot died after three years of disease from brain cancer. <clears throat> and then also there was unfortunate things uh, in our family. My child was also uh, hit by leukemia several years later. He is not in the 20% because today he has been cured. After these ordeals, I decided well, to continue my life by giving it to others, especially to children suffering from cancer. I founded the Princess Margot uh, 10 years ago in 2012 to help the families that go through that tsunami, that scourge, by supporting them in the best way and trying to provide them a maximum of support, of peace and well-being, but also uh, warmth and good mood. We know that uh, uh, it's very important to have high spirits when you have uh, such a disease. And today, thanks to the selection of Présence Margot uh, at the hospice, we decided to finance, hopefully, if today you are, uh, if Bone is very generous today, a uh, a mark home, a parent home that will allow children to not be far from their parents. That house will help to accommodate parents of hospitalized children so that parents and also the carers, we, help, we know that carers are very important. They can be not far from their children, comfortable in a house that is warm where they can really sleep, take a shower, take a rest and have uh, volunteers around them and above all, not far from the hospital. It is for this parent home that I'm here today, and I hope that we will be able to help these families who are in dire need of this. Thank you very much. Mrs. Flamand. Hello, everyone. Look, what can I say after you, Camille Muriel? It is an honor for me to have been contacted to moderate this auction this afternoon and provide my modest contribution. I'm extremely sensitive to childhood. Childhood is the world of tomorrow. I know that childhood can be broke uh, without money, and when it or and when it is about defending it, it trying to protect it and ensure that tomorrow's world is better, since it will be uh, with all these children of today, my commitment is right here, it is total. So this afternoon, it will be a first one for me, but I'm very enthusiastic with it, with a lot of desire, the desire really to fight for it. I was put pressure, and uh, uh, two people uh, last year beat uh, 800,000 euros in a record for two years. I'm saying that will be exceeded with the one million. So I'm boasting about this morning. I said, okay, maybe uh, I, I just uh, w went too far. Look, when it is about defending uh, children and make uh, wages as those that were uh, outlined by the ch these chairs who are committed in the daily. Uh, look, finally, I feel that not. it's not uh, asking too much, uh, too much of uh, hoping that 1 million euros uh, be obtained to help these organizations. And uh, Francois, you also mentioned Victor Hugo. May I also do that? Victor Hugo uh, is supposed to say the following sentence, which I have used for a combat which is mine against uh, sexual uh, 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 violence against children. Victor said, nothing stops an idea when it's the, the time is ripe. So we want to reach the record of one million during the wine auction. And hopefully nothing will stop us from reaching it. Thank you. Look, it's about time to talk about wine, right? At long last, Mrs. Griveaux, will you please? And after that, 
So I will not uh, each time be the mass of ceremonies then Mr. Labbe and Mr. Donore from the uh, board who will just step in. Hello everyone, it's always, uh, I'm always delighted, I'm honored to be back with you to talk about what uh, was our year like, what sometimes uh, led to tough sleep and sometimes uh, we uh, led to present a, a, um, a 10 BVB this year, this vintage 2022 which has a bit uh, rocked us, uh, put, sent us into our limits in uh, 2021, 2019. Uh, we thought will give us many surprises. Well, 2022 came along. I wanted to call it Viva la Vida, that vintage, because life is such that by we always have in our businesses to challenge ourselves and also respect whatever happens, what is decided or not by nature in terms of giving us. So 2022, to make it short, I think most of you uh, know already the highlights. Well, 2022 was not supposed to be so early. It was not supposed to be such an early vintage. And it is because of March which was abnormally hot, that the bud starting coming out. So in this momentum, the vine never stopped. And despite uh, the third and fourth of real intent of grief, that were tough frost days where we expected frost and it came when, like Mr. Poer, I remember that moment in our manch committee said, Mrs. Trivo, what are we going to do? I said, nothing. But you know, I'm I'm so scared. You know, at the same time, it was unthinkable to put cancels all over the place because the estate is such that it's too broad, too large to choose, and also because maybe uh, the vegetation or the growth conditions were not risky or that risky. So we tried. Thank you for your support about my decisions that were tough to take. Well, then we went, we had a good ride finally where diseases became very rare. Well, uh, May finally uh, led the vintage into a real uh, early uh, bud bursting. We saw that the uh, uh, fruit uh, on setting would come out. We were happy to see many bunches coming out, big ones, and also the flowering took place very well at the very early of June. So you you have a little bit of rainfall here and there. And then June came along, certainly with uh, 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 water uh, conditions that were low, but the potential of harvest that was significant. So June finally turned out to be where we had to do, to take all the decisions for me, the British sir, with the team. It's not very easy to simp, uh, to decide by myself. Thank you for my team of so wine growers of having supported me for your advice. Uh, they worked on the plots when they decided in June to, to start a little bit of harvesting when they decided not to prune because we wanted to protect. There was a lot of sunshine and it was high temperatures. Sunshine was long, it is hot for a long time. So all these decisions about uh, 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 tilling uh, choices were essential and I believe that they are highly involved in the fact that we succeeded in proposing yesterday afternoon very beautiful wines in whites and in uh, reds. June to me made the 2022 vintage for quite some time after having uh, done the winemaking, what was linked with what we had been through in the vines and the grapes, the quantity, the quality that we found in uh, our estates. And I think it was June. June was in surplus in terms of uh, sun and light, but also it exceeded uh, water uh, supply. So vines took advantage in June to say, hey, look, uh, everything that has been given to me, I'll keep in this probably led to the fact that even mid-August, 
the signs of uh, uh, water stress were not that significant given the context that we had in terms of the weather during the summer period. We had to wait for the 13th of August to start to detect the first sign of hydric stress, as we call it, not necessarily through foliation by, by reaching, but due to the fact because we had a, a veraison that was very uh, slow and stiff, the wines so of fish didn't show us that they, uh, they were hot and they were thirsty. This is the first thing you see visually. It said to us, look, I will go at my pace and finally I will not be that early. So when we expected to pick a harvest on the 15th of August, we had to wait a little bit and at the Domaine, it is on 25th August that we started cutting in the Maconnet with a beautiful Puy Fissé uh, plot. And after that, we moved on with the Côte de Bonne, with the whites, as from the Monday uh, 29th. And moving on, the reds and Pinot Noir the harvest, as from Tuesday, the third year. I mean, it's uh, really once in a lifetime to, to last. It, it, took, it took us 18 days because there was a lot of harvesting, but also we took enough time and scale. Look, I fully agree about the fact that time be our ally. Even though things are moving swiftly, we can afford to take uh, time. And we took it to look for the pomeras that we waited for. We took enough time to look for the samora that came in only on the 16th of September. We took it also to uh, make sure the cortons unexpectedly were in the midst of the bone. Corton Charlemagne also pulled it off later on. So you can see that all this mosaic of harvest dates corresponds quite well to our climates, to our plots, and the implementation of vinification was quite easy because we were quite uh, secure and serene about our harvest dates. So the whites were quite expressive with a lot of dr uh, dryness, with beautiful aroma, a nice freshness that we'll be able to propose this afternoon, 482 white pièces, 620 in reds. Well, all, uh, look, this morning I was at the winery and taste said, oh, it's great, the Volnay, the Pomar, I have this, the taste they're supposed to have, we're great with the Cotton. It's the most beautiful compliment I can get because in a vintage, that, could, that might seem to be a bit uh, linear or smoothing out when it's hot, it's hot for everybody. However, our grand terroir can stand out, but the difficulty of the winemaker is to step back and to serve. <coughs> Look, um, I know yeah, I have an idea of serving, but it means and serving the revelation of great terroir, where you find some red wines that are dense, consistent, with lots of tannin, but rounded, above all with beautiful fruit freshness and that fruit freshness we look for it because we harvest it well and at the right moment so i also hope that this afternoon <coughs> the record not only of this beautiful president's pièce will be beaten <coughs> and totally achieved or even exceeded we said right yes exceeded we're not here to do the same no 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 we want to do better <clears throat> but also to allow a beautiful afternoon, and Mr. Boher mentioned it, look, you all know that a second year of uh, organic conversion took place well. We started in 2021, so if we succeed in 2021, we were comfortable about 2022, and the results we'll see in 2023, so it's 2024 that the uh, harvest will officially coming from organic grape of organic wine. Uh, new wineries are not yet, but look, <coughs> we had the Corton winery. We all accepted the uh, Clos des Mouches Cuvée or winery, but the real surprise were the Corton, <coughs> the four wineries of Corton, which are proposed with a separation of climas, very identity based, and I think they should contribute to make sure that we have, we know for whom we uh, uh, every morning got up to work. Thank you. François, over to you. Well, uh, what else can I add, really, to what Ludine 
has just outlined as regards the quality of the wines. From Chablis to Macon, it went exactly uh, as it was with you marvelously well. Look, we have just finalized first estimate of harvest and it should be 1,750,000 hectoliters. That's about 230 million bottles to be compared to the figure of last year, which was 992,805. Uh, and an exceptional uh, low year, as you will remember. Uh, to be compared as well with 2018, However, we have 1,000 hectares more in production this year compared to 2018. So the quality of our wines in Burgundy is absolutely phenomenal. We had a rocky year, though, and I'll give you a little bit of the story of this harvest that started for the Clément de Bourgogne on the 16th of August, and we completed this with the Côte de Nuit in the the third week of September, at the same time with the Haute Côte and uh, Chablis, and six weeks in between the beginning and the end of the harvest. This is something that was unseen. Uh, when my king took one place, we have good wines. The degrees are moderate. Uh, colors are very pure. A lot of suppleness in the mouth. But you are all experts, you all tasted, and I think you can confirm what I'm just telling you. Despite these good news, we are concerned about the climate changes and we decided to work collectively towards a carbon neutralization project for our wines to reach it in 2035. To this end, we are working actively with the professionals of our uh, business, our Delft partner, to put in place an action plan that each and everyone can make their own. Our purpose is 60% of reduction of our carbon reductions to have a threshold, and for the 40%, we should have contribution actions to that neutralization. <clears throat> this action plan will be implemented during our next general meeting in the summer of 2023. <clears throat> so what is important for us is the opening of the Cité de Vin de Bourgogne in, the, in Chablis, Beaune, and Macon. And Alain uh, announced it, the, the neighborhood, the district of these Vin de Beaune uh, and of the Cité will be opened up on, on, uh, at 11 o'clock on the 11th. As far as we are concerned, after years and years of thinking and uh, design and uh, numerous work, uh, uh, and with all the supply problems that we are aware of, the city will opening up in the spring of 2023. In the three cities I mentioned this project, that we have professionals in Burgundy that we initiated is supported by all local authorities and by many uh, private patrons. It aims at transmitting the wine heritage of our region to the largest number possible that uh, millennial heritage, famous everywhere as being a model, an exclusive model of terroir winemaking. So the entry door to that city, uh, it should provide a unique uh, experience and multisensorial. I can supplement this by adding that the works, uh, the main works are over and the Chablis buildings will be open in all likelihood at the very early of spring and Bourne will be open around mid-May and today. Our teams are working towards equipping uh, the uh, inside in terms of scenography, all of this uh, for our beautiful region. Look, I was looking this morning at the blue sky and I felt Oh, such a, it's such a beautiful region. And I think Laurent will draw a parallel between this beautiful weather and the good health of our economy, our wine related to the economy, that is. Thank you. Thank you, Francois. Look, I racked my brains in the past 10 years to try to find a Victor Hugo cottage to talk about the figures of Burgundy. Unfortunately, I don't have probably enough culture. I didn't find anything. The good piece of news, as Francois said, 
is this magnificent 2022 harvest with figures that give us again, if it was necessary, uh, uh, lifts our spirits. Just in figures, in a few words, 1,750,000 hectoliters, that's plus 23% compared to the average of the past five last years. And it's more than 75% compared to 2021. 2021 was a harvest that was historically very low. 2018, not long ago, was historically significant. It gives you an idea about the changes that we have now with the climate change. And we need to adjust to such a situation so that this volume of 2022 is lifting our spirits again. The bottles will start to be in the market. Uh, during 2023 for the first one, the Appellation Regional. It's mainly from the end of 2023 and 2024 that we'll see the full effects. And I believe that it, we need such uh, one after the other harvest really to catch up with the small harvest we've been having in the past few years. So a few words now about the markets. The trends that we saw during the last press conference several weeks ago <coughs> are being borne out. First of all, the releases from estates are made up both of what we call uh, transactions, uh, that is the sales between the wine growers and the trades, and on the other hand, the releases in bottles by the estates themselves. Now, the transactions for 2022, without any surprise, they are surging plus 67%, and the last year we were at minus 30, so the sales from the transactions follow suit with the volumes of production. It's not very surprising. As regards bottle sales at the estate or propriété in the campaign that uh, ended end of July, we are at plus 10 percent, which shows to what extent really the scarcity of the vintage of 2021 had created a lot of tension in the markets, a lot of demand. And as I say, we had, were forced during last year uh, to really rake our drawers, but to tear us to find really something to make available to our customers around the globe. Everything that we had as an outcome, our inventories were at the lowest, historically speaking, at the end of July, at the end of the campaign, the previous one. <coughs> as regards markets now, <coughs> in that case, since the beginning of the year, over nine months, we are seeing it's confirmed now for several months, we are seeing uh, drop for the first time for years now our volumes are down it's not surprising because as a matter of fact the available volumes themselves are quite limited there's certainly a price effect but for the time being essentially due to volume so that our operators domain and maison will not be able to make available to our customers abroad or in france the volumes that would have been necessary we had to make some uh, very strict allocations. Now, as regards, for example, uh, the large retailers in France there, unfortunately, th this is in line with the general trend. In France, there's some uh, lower consumption of wine. It's due to different reasons. First of all, the age pyramid, the young generations consume less wine than the previous generations. Young consumers are tempted by other drinks like beer or spirits, and uh, wine is competing with all these kinds of beverages. So we know that in France there's a lower consumption, especially the reds are being hit. And Burgundy, which was galloping in front in the past few years of sales with large retailers, and Burgundy, which was quite, we were the only region that were uh, uh, doing better than the average trend. Well, we are off a little bit. The figures are quite significant. We are down by about 25.7% in the past nine months in volume and down by 16% in revenue or sales. And once again, we are joining up with the general trend essentially because we don't have any available volume to propose. <coughs> Fortunately, <coughs> the traditional stack, especially restaurants, catering did quite well. Burgundy wines are extremely, extremely well in uh, restaurants and also in the uh, specialist uh, wine shops, a study shows that Burgundy represents 17% of uh, the offer these uh, specialist uh, wine sellers make. We know that we are only 4% of uh, the all uh, the production of French wine, so we are overrepresented. So we are doing well. So export markets, no changes in our top five. Our 
uh, the club of fives of the main markets. In this case, again, volumes are down overall for exports since the beginning of the year. It's, it's minus 10.2%. However, uh, the sales of valuation continues to rising. We are plus 12 percent, which shows some disconnect between our volumes and our sales. So as a matter of fact, prices remain quite high and will continue to progress following the scarcity of the latest vintages and all our main export markets like the United States, Canada, the UK, Japan and Belgium, <clears throat> the top five ones are on the same trend of lower volumes and an increase again in terms of uh, sales and revenues. <laughs> There's also some kind of diversification of markets. So we see some markets which after these top five are Denmark and Sweden, which are also making progress. The top five actually is a bit down proportionally, which is very good. We are diversifying our markets. And yesterday night, the Minister of Agriculture that we met and that we alerted <coughs> about the situation in the U.S. said we needed to diversify our markets. We didn't wait for the advice of the minister to do so and have extremely diversified markets in Burgundy. I'm available for you if you have any questions, whether now or later on in private afterwards. Thank you very much. Listen, we are all now available for you, for your questions, of course. Yes, sir. Bernard Berchi, first of all, a few words for Laurent. Victor Hugo is God uh, uh, made, wine, made water and man made wine. I have a comment and a question. My comment. Ludwin is a bit too unassuming. I'd like to underline exceptional quality of the wines this year for several reasons. Of course, there's a vintage effect, we've mentioned it, but there's a real background work that was done in the vineyards since 2015 that had never been completed before and today clearly has uh, led to great results. It's probably one of the most beautiful Bourgogne wine that has been produced in our space. And it's the honor of Burgundy that is uh, sustained, you know. Additionally, as you know, the Cuvée des Espices is bringing together different clim climat due to our history. And when you put together Renards in the Corton, no one imagined doing this before. So the wine takes a little bit of time to find its spirits again. This year, we finally have done our chores. There are four coton, four clima, and burgundy and the clima uh, is, is something important here. And they, these wines are wonderful, whether they're Renard. And also, uh, there's one client, which is Les Chambres, which is one of the best so-called clima uh, of coton. Well done for having taken this decision. And... Uh, Fantastic for the exceptional quality. Now, my question, Mr. François Labbé said there were 1,000 hectares more compared to 2018. That's 2,500 acres. Could you uh, spell out uh, and pinpoint where they are located? <clears throat> Look, this is about new plantations, of course. Maconnet, Chablis, that's in the south part of the region. It's a trend that is growing. We still have lots of possibilities for further plantation, which we are managing. It's, it's rather the association of wine growers uh, that is being cautious in order not to uh, exaggerate uh, a number of appellations. That's my answer, Bernard. Alexandra Bellon, you mentioned the meeting with the minister yesterday. Did you speak about reviewing the Appellation de Bourgogne or reconsidering, revisiting it? Yes, we, we spoke about it a bit. We asked, uh, Guillaume Boulbert asked that the INAO conferences be organized in order to try to adapt the institute to the current situation. In other words, as Thibault said, 
you, you know, works at the pace of last year, whilst with the climate change, we have a speeding up of the phenomena, and it takes 18 years to rank uh, the premier cru in Pouilly and we need to improve those things. But certainly, uh, this, this is uh, really uh, very difficult, and hopefully we can speed things up, you know. It's uh, like a, a gas factory. Yuki Komato, Japan, I have a question for Laurent. Have you noticed already an impact uh, from the Ukraine war or something that might uh, happen at a later stage in this regard? Yes, there are several impacts. First of all, Russia and Ukraine represented less than 1% of market share for our Burgundy wines, so the loss, the temporary loss of those markets is not uh, impacting the wine of but the main impacts are inflation on the one hand which impacts the purchasing power of consumers and therefore uh, the wine is not an essential uh, commodity it contributes to the lower consumption we mentioned before now the second thing is the same in inflation impacts the cost of our bottles our packages cardboards in a significant way it's about 20 or 30 Four percent of price increases of one year, certainly on large, very expensive wines. The percentage which is represented by the container is fairly low, but Burgundy essentially is about region, appellation regional with products that range between 10 to 15 euros in prices, and it contributes, unfortunately, to the increase in the prices of our wines. By the way, in inflation has a huge impact on uh, the hospital finances. No other question? Yes, sir. Compared to the, the 22 uh, challenges of volumes sharply higher, how can you forecast the Burgundy average prices? Will it go down or not, or go up? Or stay the same. Look, I don't think uh, it is limited to me. It is uh, the supply and demand that uh, matter is small production, which is pulling up higher and uh, prices move up because we have 4,000 operators in Burgundy between the wine growers and Negocion and uh, the sellers. It's 4,000 economic agents take their decisions at their level. Truly, it's the involvement of the market, the pure and perfect market, as we hear in the economic uh, theory. If we had several years of significant volume, it's quite likely that we have prices going down. As I said before, in my opinion, for us to see a market that finds, again, a normal situation, it takes at least two significant harvests, like uh, 2022. The effects, we won't see them, I believe, before the end of next year or 2024. For the remainder, unfortunately, I will not uh, uh, make a forecast. It's the same thing for our auction sale this afternoon. <clears throat> By the way, let me add, Burgundy, well, the Burgundy wines are, have an image of Expensive wines is totally false. It might be true for 4% of the wines produced. <coughs> Let's not forget that 50% of the Bourgogne wines are generic appellation white, Macon, red, uh, with prices in uh, among the retailers uh, will not surpass very often 12 or 13 euros. People are focusing on the Grand Cru, but the Grand Cru is the very small tip of the iceberg. Uh, you have all the rest under the water, under the sea. So today, uh, demand, uh, the overall demand, is mainly uh, around uh, appellation uh, of the Côte Chalonnaise, or Côte de Beaune, Santonne, La Loire, with, where you have great value for the money. And also, if our wines are sold so well, it's because they're so good. Paul Mathieu, François Labbé, could you specify 
these famous wines which are under the water, which are less expensive. Uh, the latest Appellation Coteau Bourguignon, for example, or Bourgogne Côte d'Or, are they uh, pulling it off, doing well, or I don't know. I have questions about this because the Grand Cru are doing quite well. We understand that. Well, it's not under the water, under the level of the sea. That's what I mean, you know. Of course. Yes, of course, Paul. Appellation Bourgogne Côte d'Or, which we'll uh, be enjoying uh, when we taste the, the Nest Saint Vincent Tournante of Coucher. Yes, the Côte d'Or wine growers that produce Appellation wines that are generic wanted also to have their geographic uh, uh, Appellation. It's recent, granted, but it's working quite well. Coteau Bourguignon, that's the Appellation, the lowest in the hierarchy it allows consumers and to the new consumers to start uh, knowing and appreciating the wines from Burgundy. It's fine as well. May I ask a question? I'm highly interested in the uh, wine tourism. Are you planning new projects in regard to wine tourism and uh, uh, about digital communication around this? And, 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 and communicate not only through the uh, normal uh, means of communication, but also go through the uh, digital means. Look, uh, wine tourism grew uh, tremendously in Burgundy, especially following the fact that you're part of the world UNESCO, UNESCO heritage, which is quite quality, uh, high-end accommodation. Hospitality has adjusted to it, and the, our uh, board, BIVB, uh, supports the producers who want to propose visits and offer some. Uh, I manage this, and for me, wine tourism the main uh, topic in Burgundy is the next arrival. We mentioned this uh, early on of the Cité des Climats des Vins de Bourgogne, which will be a great equipment that will allow, whether in Beaune, in Chablis, or in Macon, to uh, help uh, people discover Burgundy, increase the knowledge about this Burgundy with the visitors that we'll get in this region. And I'm extremely upbeat about the future of the city because we have a great ecosystem in Burgundy with visitors who come from around the world and we'll have a great equipment that will allow them, that will be the entry door to, for these tourists into Burgundy with also, uh, we want them to redirect them towards the maison, domain, estates and producers. We'll take with the last two questions, please. <coughs> Hello, everyone, Guinot Banois. Question for the Regisseur. Uh, are there any bequests in view for, uh, for a new appellation that could emerge? Alors, um, Listen, the, we benefit, as a matter of fact, from the uh, generosity for several years. A number of projects are underway. A number of ideas are starting uh, to pop up a little bit when I welcome uh, wine growers during tasting uh, events. Some of them uh, clearly express a desire and the idea. And by the way, it remains something. Well, uh, if someone uh, will materialize, it's still something that needs to be built further. It involves a lot of heritage. Quite often, these are family values that need to be uh, uh, driven and carried so institution does not do any take any initiative in regard to this. Uh, the, our institution provides care and attention and receives the generosity that people uh, want to give her. There are a few leads that we have, I will not talk about them. It would be too early, and above all, we need to respect the time that is necessary for each family to construct and build this beautiful project. <clears throat> Maybe I add, may I add that on this point, First of all, the decision uh, belongs to the supervisory board of the Zizospice Civil de Bonne, chaired by Mr. Alain Sugno. And each time this question was raised, 
as Mr. Louis Wien said, there has to be an approach and it has to be aligned as well with all the history of our institution and must be part and parcel of it. We are very fond of a number of values, as you know, last night Mr. Feverly mentioned that one of the values of Burgundy was hospitality. And so this is why we feel very good here. The people who work in the hospital care feel good, but it has to be part of a perfect consistency and a logic. Thank you. Last question, Michel Godel. <clears throat> no, uh, following uh, up on the question of wine tourism, concretely, how will you position yourself as part of this fabulous uh, gastronomy valley, which apparently has a bit of a hard time of really finding its bearings between Dijon, Beau, Nuit Saint-Georges, and even further down south. Thank you. Yes, as a matter of fact, remember, we are a, a wine, not a gastronomy. We are a wine city, and gastronomy remains in Dijon. Yes, the, the uh, attractive idea starting in Rangis near Paris and going through Dijon and going to Lyon. Why not? That's great. Notice that geographically we are aligned from Chablis, Bon Macon. We are in the straight line in this valley, but our approach is a bit different. And as quite rightly Laurent said, our wish is that each visitor uh, leaving the Cité feel uh, like having Burgundy and wine from Burgundy, from uh, our heritage, from our uh, taste, our gastronomy as well. So. We thank you all for your uh, loyalty and by way of conclusion, never forget the child that we have all been. Mm -hmm.